Do you have a tight bathroom like this one here? This is my daughter's bathroom. It's right off of her bedroom. It's very tiny. It only has a sink and a toilet in it. And the vanity was way too big for this space. So we're gonna replace that vanity with a pedestal sink. And in this video, that's exactly what I'm gonna show you how to do. I'm gonna show you how to install a pedestal sink and the faucet that goes along with it. So let's jump into the video. I think you're gonna like it because it'll save you time, money, and a lot of aggravation. Faucets can be really expensive and I wanted to give you this hot tip. Recently, I found a great website called faucetdepot.com. I'm a repeat customer after I found it because number one, you're gonna find the lowest prices for faucets over at Faucet Depot. They have a knowledgeable staff, so if you have a question, you can always do that online or you can give them a call. And secondly, they have a huge stock of different faucets that you can choose from. All name brand faucets like Moen, Delta, Kohler, American Standard, you name it. So check that out because that's where I bought the faucet today that I'm gonna be installing on this pedestal sink. The first thing you're gonna do with your pedestal sink is to do a mock-up. You wanna put it in the space where it's gonna go and see how it fits. This is the P-trap right here. So you want the pedestal itself to fit right underneath that P-trap. As you can see, there is a slot for that P-trap. There's a cutout. You wanna make sure that the, the pedestal that you chose actually has a cutout that's deep enough to accommodate the P-trap height in your bathroom. The next step is to dry fit the sink on top of that pedestal. Oftentimes there's a lip right underneath the sink and you want the pedestal to be flush with that lip. So we're just gonna scooch this forward. With the pedestal in place and the sink flush with the back of the wall, you're gonna mark posi the position of the holes in the sink on the wall. All you wanna do is now double check to make sure that there's a stud here and here or there's wood blocking where these hole positions are gonna be. So you can knock with your finger and notice the difference in the pitch and likely there is gonna be a stud here and here or blocking here because I know there is, I put it there. <laughs> but you can also check with a stud finder like the Franklin Center. I love the Franklin Center and as you can see, right where that hole is gonna be, there is a piece of wood blocking. On the left side, if we run across, there's a piece of wood blocking on the right hand side too. The next step is to drill an eighth inch hole through the drywall and into the wood blocking with our drill. So here's our Delta faucet right here. This is the Trinsic faucet, single handle faucet. I like single handle faucets because there's less moving parts than two handled faucets. So you get the faucet, the pop-up assembly, the escutcheon and washer, the tool for installing the faucet, and this goes with the pop-up assembly too. There's a little groove in the rubber gasket here. You wanna place that so that it's flush with the escutcheon. And what we're gonna do next is put the supply lines down through the escutcheon in the rubber gasket, like that. So I wanted to show you there's a little hole here. You wanna slide the bolt that's coming out from the faucet down into that slot. Place the supply lines down through the center hole in the sink. And this is how the faucet is gonna look, roughly. There's a bracket, there's a metal mounting bracket that you slide over the stud here, the metal stud. You hold that in place like so. 
and there's a nut on this tool that Delta gives you. So you want to drive that nut so that it's flush with the bracket. Now before you truly tighten this up as much as possible, you want to turn the sink back around and just make sure that the faucet is lined up the way that you want it lined up. In this case, you want the faucet to be pointing straight down into the drain. Then you can tighten it up and just pull the tool off. It's as simple as that. Just a side note here, don't throw away the tool that comes with your faucet. Keep it because you'll likely need it for down the road. So either put it in your toolbox or leave it in the bathroom somewhere where you installed the faucet. At this point, you want to disassemble the pop-up assembly. And just note all the different parts. You've got the drain, you've got the brass nut, the brass washer, and the rubber gasket. So take it all apart and set it aside. Note that this little washer here, this little plastic washer, goes up like this into the pop-up assembly. Now what I like to do is take it all apart and put it down on the towel the way that it was assembled. Just makes it easier on yourself. Make sure that the drain right here is super clean. You can wipe it off with a cloth. because this is where we're gonna adhere the pop-up assembly down into there. You're going to want to apply some silicone sealant to the underside of the flange at this point. And I highly recommend getting the best silicone sealant that you can find at the store. Apply a generous bead of silicone to the bottom of the flange. Drop the flange down into the sink, like so. Take your rubber gasket, place that over the flange, then your washer, your brass washer, then your nut, your brass nut, at this point you don't have to over tighten this brass nut, just it has to be snug enough to keep this in place. Remember, you want this plastic washer to go up into the bottom of the flange, like so. Then you can screw on or hand tighten the tailpiece, a plastic tailpiece here. Make sure that this pivot piece faces the back of the, of the sink. So it has to face the wall. So you want to turn it like this until it faces like that. Now you can tighten this brass nut up against the brass, brass washer and the gasket here. But don't turn the pop-up, don't turn this metal part. Make sure that is staying nice and stationary while you tighten this nut. And you're gonna have to use a pair of channel locks to do this. Now you can wipe off any of the excess sealant that is on the sink. Remove the pivot nut here. There's going to be a little washer in here. You want to leave that there. You're going to put the horizontal rod in like so. But just as a side note, when we put the pop-up down, you can make this removable by just having it rest on top of the horizontal rod, or you can shift it and have the rod go inside the stopper like so, so that when you move, move it up and down, it's non-removable. So I'm going to make it non-removable. And what we'll do is we'll slide this down into the drain assembly so that this hole lines up with this hole. Because now that this is lined up, we're just going to slide this in. It's going to go through this hole and the hole that's in the stopper. Remove the clip and place the nut back onto where it used to be. So you just want to hand tighten this. That's all you have to do. What I like to do is test and see if it actually works. So we can like shift this around and show you that yes, in fact, it does work. Now we're just going to put this strap on here like that and place the clip 
onto the horizontal rod like so, so that the strap doesn't go anywhere. So here's the lift rod right here. We're just going to slide this down through the faucet body. And you want it to go down through the holes in the strap. You may have to loosen this little bolt here. So what you'll do is loosen that, put the rod down in there, and then tighten this bolt so that whenever you lift up on the rod, it lifts up on the pop-up stopper. See, it's not tight enough. So that's why you need to tighten this down. And you definitely want to make sure you do this before you install the sink. All right, so there you go. This operates the pop-up stopper. And like I said, you always want to test to make sure that it's working properly. Now you're ready to put the sink back onto the pedestal, but I wanted to show you two things that came with my pedestal sink that'll help you out with the mounting. So my pedestal sink came with a toggle bolt. The sink also came with these lag screws, which you can place through the sink and into the studs or blocking that's in the wall. So here's how you want to do it. You want to put the metal washer on first and then the rubber washer because the rubber washer is going to go up against your sink and it's going to protect your sink from being damaged by the lag screw in the metal washer. Oh, and the other thing is you don't want to over tighten this. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna test fit the sink on top of the pedestal. What I'm looking for here is to make sure that the drain assembly on the sink goes down into the P-trap. If it doesn't go down into the P-trap the entire way, so like an inch, inch and a half, we're gonna have to add on an extension piece to the drain assembly that's on the sink. So let's test and see how this goes. Okay, as I suspected, it's nowhere close. So I'm going to show you how to install an extension pipe onto the sink. So this tailpiece isn't long enough to meet up with the P-trap. That's why we need an extension tube like this. This is a 12 inch extension tube. And what we're going to do is unscrew the nut. There's going to be a little washer inside there. And the tapered end of this washer goes down into the extension tube. Slide the nut onto the tailpiece slide the little washer onto the tailpiece as well. Then we're going to slide the extension tube as far up as possible and move the little plastic washer down into it because that's going to create a watertight seal when I tighten this nut like so. And you only have to hand tighten it. We have the sink back on the pedestal. I'm going to mark the position of this extension tube so that it goes down about one inch into the P-trap. So I'm going to make a little mark on that extension tube so that I know that when I cut it, it'll be down one inch in the P-trap. It's hard to get a camera back there as you can see. So as you can see here, I made the mark on the extension tube where it meets up down in the P-trap. So right here, this is the bottom of the P-trap this is about, I don't know, an inch and a half, maybe two inches down into the P-trap. So I want to cut this extension tube off right here. I'm going to be using a rigid tube cutter. And it's really sweet because you can use it on one and a quarter inch pipes or one and a half inch pipes. It says it right here. This is one and a quarter inch. This is one and a half inch. And all you do is press down on this trigger and slide it onto the pipe. Okay. And then... There's a little picture window, right, right there. And all you have to do is turn or rotate the tube cutter like so. Now I would suggest that you hold on to the actual body of the extension tube that's on the, on the faucet. So go ahead and hold on to that, actually hold on to both, and just turn the tube cutter until you cut the pipe. Any kind of curly cues like this, you want to smooth out with sandpaper or even emery cloth. So here we have a piece of emery cloth. Just run it on the inside, run it on the outside, smooth out these edges so that you get a nice clean pipe. 
What you'll do next is slide your slip nut on so that the threads are facing this way. Then your plastic washer, which will then go down into the P-trap and slide this up about, uh, about two inches or so. Okay, so because this is going to go down into the P-trap and you always want the tapered edges to be facing that way because this is going to create a nice tight seal with that P-trap pipe. I wanted to show you the basic setup for the pipes in the wall. You've got your shutoff valves, this is the hot water, this is the cold water. I covered them with painter's tape so that any drywall or any kind of dust doesn't get in there when I'm doing work in the bathroom. This is your gooseneck. It goes into the wall, it connects up with the wall pipe, and I wanted to show you that this section right here, it's super important that you get this nice and tight. There should be a washer, so there is a washer right here, this white washer or clear washer, that has to go into the wall like so. And then you want your nut to be nice and flush with these threads. I could probably clean these threads a little bit better. But you want them to be, you want that nut to be nice and flush. Now your gooseneck will move a little bit, all right? So you have your scutcheon cover plate. This is too big for this pipe, but for now it'll do. So you have your gooseneck, you have a nut here. Then what will happen is you connect your P-trap to the gooseneck like so. You want to slide the nut down over this so that these two pipes are nice and tight and flush. The extension tube that we have on our sink goes down into this part of the P-trap. And I want that extension tube to go down as far as possible so that we have a nice clean connection and the washer that's on the extension tube will go down into this part of the P-trap. All right, this last time, what we're gonna do is look down into the P-trap and try to line up the extension tube with it. All right, I think I have the pipe in there. It just makes things a little bit easier, but of course you can just come down here and do that. Okay, with all your pipes put together, the P-trap is on the extension tube. The P-trap is attached to the gooseneck. That's the pipe that's going into the wall. You've made sure that all those connections are nice and tight. What you can do is grab the sink, grab the pedestal, and push this, this whole unit, up against the wall so that the sink, the sink holes line up with the holes that you drilled into the wall. Now what we can do is attach the sink to the wall either with the lag screws or the toggle bolts. In this case, I'm gonna be using the lag, lag screws to do that. Okay, now we're gonna connect the water lines. As you can see here, there's a, red, there's a red connection here that indicates hot. Now these water supply lines are already connected to the faucet. If your faucet doesn't have water supply lines, I recommend using steel braided supply lines. Now I'm gonna take this tape off of here and what we're gonna do is we're going to feed this supply line down in there, okay? Uh, now, if it's too long, you can cut, sometimes you can cut these, but in this case, that's not what we're gonna do. We're actually gonna bend them. We're gonna loop them like so, all right? So you can loop these according to the directions. So this isn't me saying this, it's the directions. So we're gonna loop it they're gonna place the connection so that the rubber fitting is nice and flush with the shutoff valve. These are 3-8 compression fittings. So you're just gonna tighten them by hand at first and then use a wrench to tighten it down by another quarter, another half turn. Again, make sure that this is not cross-threaded because if it is, you're in for a big surprise in terms of water going everywhere. So this is as tight as I can get it by hand. I'm going to tighten it another another half turn, quarter to half turn. You can move the shutoff valve just a little bit slowly so that you can access this nut to turn it if you don't have enough room back here. You want to do the exact same thing for the cold side. Do one final test to make sure that the sink is nice and secure to the wall. It is in this case. So our last step is to remove the aerator with this tool so that when we turn on the water at, this, at the faucet, any debris that's in the lines won't clog up the aerator. Turn this like so. This will remove the aerator from the faucet. 
flush the lines. See? Good thing we did that because there was some debris that was in there. All you have to do now is put the aerator back in and you're done. Oh, as a side note, <laughs> make sure that you have the pop-up in the down position in case the washer from the aerator falls down into the sink. The last thing to do, besides checking that the pipes aren't leaking underneath this, is to apply a bead of silicone sealant between the sink and the wall. That way, when there's water splashing, it won't go behind the sink, and that's a good thing. Well, there you have it. That's how you install a pedestal sink in your bathroom. I hope that you liked this video. Hopefully it helps you out with your own project. If it did, go ahead and give me a thumbs up over on YouTube or like this on Facebook. That way your friends can find this video and maybe it'll help them with their project. All right, the other thing that you can do is this. Make sure you sign up for the email newsletter back on over at Home Repair Tutor because we do a lot of DIY video tutorials every single week. We post one on Friday. I wouldn't want you to miss out. And we do really great giveaways for tools, supplies, and other materials. And the best way to learn about those giveaways is through the email newsletter. We have about, well, at this point, 10,500 people signed up for the email newsletter. So if they think it's good, chances are you will too. Thanks for watching the video again today. I really appreciate your time. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.